Ryan, we're going to talk to safeties today. So how do you envision you guys using your safeties this year? Are you going to go with the, the single high? Or are you going to go like with Jordan Fuller, the way that worked, or, or hybrid, or what's the plan right now? Um, yeah, I mean, we're not changing. Um, there's a lot of things that we've done in the past that we're very proud of, and then there's some things that we had to fix coming off of last year. So, you know, philosophically, we're not going to change. We just had to clean some things up. And Marcus Hooker's back. Can uh, you talk about that decision and how he's looked so far? Yeah, I mean, he obviously made a really bad mistake. Um, I think when you recruit young men and uh, their families, and you say that you know, you're going to bring them in and take care of them, then when they go through tough times, you have to work through that. Now, he understands that he's in a no tolerance policy moving forward, but uh, you know he, he obviously went through everything he needed to go through to, to pay his penance in that area. He, he obviously understands what he's done, and you know, we, we've given him this opportunity to prove to everybody that um, that he can move forward and, and change somebody else's life after what he went through. And I think that's a big part of coaching football is, is giving these guys an opportunity to learn and grow. Uh, but certainly he you know is in a no tolerance policy moving forward. Over here to the right, Dan. Ryan, it seems like you know a lot of DBs were in and out of practice during camp. Do you feel like you have a good feel for what you have in that secondary right now, or are you still kind of working through that? Uh, both. I think that the way that some guys have practiced really gives us some confidence going into that first game that there's more depth than we've had in a long time here. Um, still trying to figure out exactly who is game ready, you know. But uh, but we we have a good group of guys, and I think we're much further along than we've been uh, in the last couple of years in terms of our depth back there. When you say that with depth, do you envision you know, playing a lot of guys back there? I do. I do. I, th I think a lot of guys deserve to get on the field. Over here to the left, Austin. Ryan, what, what would you like to see at linebacker this week? I think you kind of touched on that coming out of the scrimmage that maybe that position is unsettled. What, what are you looking for in the next couple days there? Well, some of the guys just need to kind of heal up, which they're going to do. And and then other guys, um, you know, just keep, continue to get more reps and more experience. So it's a, it's a combination of two. The more experience some of those guys get, the better. And then if we heal up and they're all in there working together and they're getting, you know, full-time reps with, with the guys next to them and the communication, that's another thing that I don't think, um, you know, I quite realized going into the season is just the, the continuity of the, the linebackers being on the field together, the communication there. It's kind of almost like being in the offensive line. And so, you know, there's been some guys kind of in and out, no, no big things, just just nagging injuries like preseason camp. And so now that we're getting everybody healthy again, getting that chemistry going. You no, know, it was just one day that we got to see there last week of Ryan Bash like, was playing there when we were in. Like, where did that come from? What could he, could he be in that mix? I mean, he's played for us and he can provide depth and play on special teams. And, and if, um, you know, he, he can do both of those things, then he'll be on the travel team. Right next door, Nathan. Well, last year at this time, obviously people thought that you guys thought Josh Proctor was a good football player, but weren't ready to make him a starting free safety. What has sort of changed in, in the past year? Is there more confidence in him that he can handle that position? I think his approach has been excellent because he's he, first off he's changed his body. He's almost 200 pounds now, and he wasn't that way last year. I think he was around 185, and he's a different player with 15 extra pounds. So that was the first sign that he was maturing and taking this very seriously. Uh, but the second thing has been his consistency um, and his playmaking ability. Um, that position is very important. Um, you have to get guys on the ground when it squirts out. You have to make plays uh, in the post. And uh, he's shown that he can do that consistently. Uh, right next door, Bill. Ryan, um, about a week ago till the first game, do you feel your best five on offensive line is settled there with Devon at right tackle, player at left guard, and Nick at left tackle? I mean, we're pretty close. Yeah, we're pretty close, I think. Um, you know, Matt Jones is actually, you know, really practiced really well as well. So he, he's he's in the mix right now, but uh, it's starting to settle settle itself out, you know. Over here to the right, Clay. Did you see the new Big Ten statement on forfeitures? If you can't play because of COVID, you lose, basically. I mean, I didn't see that, but I didn't see it, no. But I, I, I get it. You get it. And what if you're fully vaccinated and you can't? Teams. Yeah, I don't know what to think of all that, to be honest with you. Hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, back row, Jack. Hey, Ryan, uh, I just want to ask about the uh, trip to the Hall of Fame last week. How yep. did that idea come about, and uh, how important was it to get the guys kind of a change of pace as they're going through the slugging? <clears throat> I thought it was a great change of scenery for our guys. Well, you know, once we, we made the two-hour bus, two bus trip up there, we practiced and then um, had lunch there, and then went on a tour of, of, the, uh, of Canton and 
um, you know, David Baker and all the people there were unbelievable at George Varis and uh, they just took great care of us. Um, you know, had a little presentation for us for about 15 minutes about the game, what it meant. It was really good for our guys just to get a feel for, you know, excellence when you're there because of the great players who played at the Hall of Fame, you know, or in the Hall of Fame, but also just what the game means, you know, the beginning of it, what this game has done for so many people. Um, it, you know, I, I went with my son in the spring and, and met everybody up there, and I just thought it'd be a great opportunity for our guys to get up there and see it and be around it. It's kind of one of those things you don't you don't forget once you've been there before. And um, and so I just I thank the people up there for taking great care of us. Got time for a couple more uh, over here to the right, Pat. I'm sorry, Brendan. I looked like Pat Murphy there with the covered up. All right. Uh, Coach, can you give us an update for just the special teams? Generally, where things are at, kicking game, punting game. How you feel going in here? Yeah, uh, Jesse uh, Murko has um, you know, done a really good job, um, you know, coming coming in here and adapting himself to our culture um, and the American culture. He's uh, got a strong leg and um, you know, very mature approach. So we feel really good about him. Um, you know, Jake and Noah are both still battling it out. Um, they've both been fairly consistent. I still like to see them a little bit more consistent. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of see as we'll kick field goals tomorrow. See how that goes. Um, you know, long snapping, Brad's still right there. And um, and then, you know, obviously just filling guys in uh, in the four areas, special teams, punt, pump block, kickoff, kickoff return, finding the right guys in the right spots there. Has anybody as a returner stood out to you in particular? I mean, uh, you know, Garrett and Jackson are still, um, you know, good back there. They, they catch the ball well. The idea is when, when, when you're punt returning, you want to, you know, get that get the first 10 yards and then the rest of it is kind of up to you. You know, that's why I say the first 10 yards are the teams. And then after that, you know, it's kind of on you. So, um, you know, those guys are a year into it now. And, and I think we have a good a good group of guys on that unit. So hopefully we can, that could be an advantage for us this year. Right behind him, Tony. Ryan, I want to ask about your COVID protocols. How often are you, are you guys being tested and are you going to continue over the season this morning? Yep, the guys who are uh, unvaccinated um, are required to test twice a week through the university. Uh, for the guys who are vaccinated, uh, they do not need to test uh, during the week. Uh, front row there, Tim. Yeah, can you delineate how many are not vaccinated on this team at this point? Is there a number? Yeah, it, you know, it kind of some guys uh, jump on, um, you know, daily. But I, I think we're right around ten, or maybe just under ten now. Yeah. The guys that are unvaccinated. Can you do me a favor? Can you name? Can you give me at least one linebacker you know is going to play, is going to be on the field, starting lineup wise when you guys play at Minnesota? Uh, Taraja Mitchell is a captain for us. I mean, he'll be on the field in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but, but you know, the majority of those guys are going to play. So it, it'll be, um, you know, it'll be something that we're going to continue to, to kind of work through the depth of it all. But uh, he's one guy you'll see for sure. Does that include Nao Teote? Uh, we'll see. We're still waiting to see uh, from the NCAA, you know, which we have classes starting tomorrow. So we're kind of holding off on that because we don't want to put him in a bad spot. But I'm um, just waiting to hear. Hopefully, you know, we're obviously, obviously optimistic. But as we're getting ready for Minnesota, classes are starting tomorrow. We're, we're hoping to hear something. He's been through a lot, and uh, we're hoping he, he gets that waiver. And final questions, uh, second row there left, Joey. Ryan, with 10 days until the opener, how much of practice now is geared toward getting ready for – for Minnesota game planning versus still kind of sorting out stuff from, from camp? Yeah, both. I mean, it's kind of 50-50, you know, half the time is spent on Minnesota, the other time is good on good, still developing each of the positions and sorting through the depth chart. How comfortable would you feel if the game was tomorrow or where do you just big picture wise feel? Uh, you, you know play? where I am. I mean, I I always want more time to get ready, so I would I would be nervous, but I, I, think, I think we have a chance to have a good team. I do. I think that we have some veteran guys. I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at in a lot of areas. And now it's just a matter of how well can we prepare for the first game and sort things out. But um, yeah, if you said we had to play a game, I already got a little nervous right there because you know there's so much that has to get organized in terms of game planning and preparing the team uh, to execute the game plan. And we're not quite there yet, but but we're getting there. Great, coach. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Ryan. Thanks, Ryan.